Hi, welcome back to Recitation. In lecture, you've been learning about line integrals and computing them around curves and closed curves and in various different ways. So um, here I have some, some problems on, on line integrals for you. So um, in all cases, I want C to be the circle of radius B. So B is some constant, some positive constant. Um, it's the circle of radius B centered at the origin, and I want to orient it counterclockwise. And then what I'd like you to do is for each of the following uh, vector fields, f, I'd like you to compute the line integral around c of f dot dr. So in the first case, where f is xi plus yj. In the second, where f is g of xy times xi plus yj. So here, g of xy is some scalar function. Uh, but you don't, you don't know a formula for this function. Um, uh, so, so your answer might be in terms of g, for example. Um, and you know you, that's a, just you can assume it's a continuous, differentiable, nice function. Um, and in the third one, f is minus yi plus xj. Now, before you start, I want to give you a little suggestion, which is often when we're when we're given a, a line integral like this, a, a sort of first thing you want to do is jump in and 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 do a parameterization right away for the curve. And, and then you get a, you know, a, a normal single, single variable integral. So what I'd like you to do for these problems is to think about the setup and think about whether you can do this without ever parameterizing c, so without ever substituting in you know, cosine and sine or, or whatever. Um, so for all, for all three parts of this problem. So if you can use some sort of geometric reasoning to save yourself a little bit of work without ever going to the parameterization. So um, why don't you pause the video, spend some time, work that out, come back, and we can work it out together. Hopefully you had some luck working on these problems. Let's get started. Um, so let's do the first problem first. Uh, let's, let's think about what this vector field f looks like, this first vector field. Uh, so let me just draw a little picture over here. So here's our circle of radius b. And this vector field f, given by xi plus yj, at every point xy, the, the, vector, the vector f is the same as the position vector of that point. So over here, the vectors like that over here, the vectors like that up here, the vectors like that. So these are, these are just a few little uh, values of f that I've drawn in there and, and so on. Down here, say, f is like that. OK. So in particular, so that's, so that's a, just a sort of, you know, if, if you wanted, you could draw in some more, uh, some more vectors, get a, get a full vector field picture. Um, so the thing to observe here is that a circle is a really nice curve, uh, right? So the circle has the property that the, the position vector at a point is orthogonal to the tangent vector to the circle, right? At every point on the circle, the tangent vector to the circle is perpendicular to the position vector. So that means it's perpendicular to f. OK, right? Because f is, par is the same, in fact, but is parallel to, to the position vector. So in part a, you have that f dot the tangent vector to your curve is equal to 0 at every point on the entire curve. All right? So, so your, your field f dot your tangent vector is, is always 0. So that means that the integral around c of f dot dr, well, we know that dr is t ds. So this is f dot t ds. But that's just 0. It's just an integral, and the, the integrand is 0 everywhere. And whenever you take a definite integral of something that's 0 everywhere, you get 0. So this is just 0 right away. We didn't have to parameterize the curve or anything. We just had to look at this, at this picture to sort of understand that, that this kind of field, what's called a radial vector field, where, where the, the vector f is always pointed directly outwards. Um, when you integrate a radial vector field around a circle centered at the origin, you get 0 because the contribution at every point is 0. OK, so that's part A. Part B is actually exactly the same. right? If we look back at our formula 
over here in part b, we have that f is given by some function g of x, y times x, i hat plus y, j hat. Well, what is this g of x, y doing? It's just rescaling. It's telling you at every point you, you can scale that vector by some, by some amount. So you know, if we looked over at this picture, you know, maybe over here you would scale some of these vectors to be longer. And over here they might be shorter or you might switch them to be negative. But, but you don't change the direction of any vector in the field. Um, from part A, you just, you just change their length. So you still have a radial vector field. And you still have the property that at every point on our curve, the tangent vector to the curve is orthogonal to the vector f. So the tangent vector is orthogonal to f. So that means you again have f dot t is equal to 0. And, when, and so f dot dr is also equal to 0 ds. And so when you integrate that, you just get 0. So that's also what happens in part B. So part B, I'm just going to write. Ditto. The exact same reasoning applies in part B as applied in part A. And you also get 0 as your, as your integral without, without having to parametrize, without having to do any tricky calculations at all. All right, so let's now look at part C. I'm going to draw another little picture. Um, so in part C, there's your curve. Uh, at the point x, y, so I'm going to draw some, some choices of f again. Um, so in part C, at, at the point x, y, your, your vector field f is minus, minus y i hat plus x j hat. Now if you draw that on the picture here, over there that's that vector. Over here, so at the point 0, 1, say, that gives you the vector minus 1, 0. So that's horizontal to the left. Uh, here are some more. There's one there. There's one there. There's another one over here, and so on. Um, in fact, what you'll notice is that this vector f is, is just parallel to the tangent vector of the circle everywhere. This, this field is a, is a tangential field. It, it's always pointing parallel to the curve. Okay, So, so we have a, a little, it's perpendicular to the position vector. It's, it's in the same direction as the tangent vector at every point. So this is something that you've seen before, I think, that, that this vector field is, is giving you the, a, a sort of a nice ro rotating motion. You know, at, at every point, it's, it's circulating counterclockwise. Um, so what does that mean? Well, again, uh, we're, it's not exactly the same as part A and B, but we'll, again, we'll be able to compute this integral without parametrizing. Why? Because f dot t in this case, well, so let's see, what is the norm of f? Um, the, the magnitude of f is just the square root of x squared plus y squared. So on our circle of radius b, that means the, the magnitude of f is b. And the magnitude of t, the, the unit tangent vector, is 1. And they point in the same direction. So when you have two vectors that point in the same direction, their dot product is just the product of their magnitudes. So that means f dot t is equal to b. This is a constant. Yeah, f dot t is equal to b. So when you integrate around the circle, f dot dr, well, this is equal to the integral um, around the circle of f dot the tangent vector with respect to arc length. But this integrand, f dot the tangent vector, is, is this constant b. So you're integrating over the curve b ds. All right? And when you integrate a constant ds, well, that just gives you the total arc length. So this is b times the total arc length. And this is a circle of radius b. So that's b times 2 pi b, which is we could also write as 2 pi b squared. So there you go. So in this, in this third case, you have a nice tangential vector field. So that means the, the integrand is, actually works out to be constant. Um, because the integrand is constant, we don't ever have to parameterize the curve. We can just use the fact that we already know its arc length in order to, to, to compute this integral. Again, we could do all of these integrals if we wanted by parameterizing the circle by b, x equals b cosine t, y equals b sine t, and, and going through and writing this as an integral from t equals 0 to 2 pi, and so on. Um, but these are, these are examples of problems where it's, where it's helpful to think about what's going on first, see if you can understand the geometry of your situation. 
And you know, sometimes you'll, you'll have a problem like this where you'll, you know, in, in either in this class or elsewhere in your life where, where something that might seem complicated has a, has a simple geometric explanation. And so when that does happen, it's nice when you can take advantage of it. Sometimes that won't happen, and sometimes you'll have to do the parameterization and the computation. But in these cases, we had these nice three examples where with a radial vector field, you can just you get that the integrand is always 0. Or with a, with a tang tangential vector field, you have that the integrand is constant. All right, so I'll stop there.